Sean O'Malley has recently come out with a statement that he believes he could become bigger than Conor McGregor. Sean and Conor have been compared to since the beginning of Sean's career when he first started on the Contender Series. With Sean's recent victories, Sean has gotten more traction than ever. And yes, this is crazy, this is insane. How could anyone become bigger than Conor? And just know this whole video is obviously going to be based off speculation of a lot of things that need to happen, a lot of things that could happen. But it, realistically, there is a way Sean O'Malley could become bigger than Conor McGregor. Could. So the three main principles we're going to be talking about in terms of creating a star is their fights, their charisma, and then their content outside. This is how you measure how much people care, how hyped they get for these types of events, who is tuning in, and how many views he gets compared to other people. Because remember, this is based on him becoming a star. I think him surpassing Connor legacy-wise, you could definitely see that happening. Sean is highly skilled. Him 50-45 in Cheeto was insane. Him knocking out Aljo with one punch was insane, albeit not out cold. And people definitely care. Now, before I get into everything, there's something I need to address because a lot of people talk about Sean's pay-per-view numbers and they're not as insane and lucrative as people think. Aljamain Sterling proved this when he said that when he got his pay-per-view bonus, it wasn't as crazy as you would have expected for a star of Sean's caliber. But pay-per-view sales, you can't really measure with Sean as much because he tends to draw in a much younger audience. And let's be honest, a lot of people just illegally stream fights and the younger the audience, the more crazy that's going to be. We see that with misfits and influencer boxing all the time. But the main thing is people care about Sean. So what's the first gauge of that? His fights are extremely entertaining. Every single one of them from him beating up Mutino to him fighting Cheeto. There's attention to all of them. Every single time he gets in there, it really is one of the main things that people are watching on any card. And throughout his career, he was always thrown on as that entry level to the main card. So people would buy in early. The UFC thought that and they're obviously doing that based off stats. His performances, we see him emoting in the cage. We see him dancing on his opponent and absolutely styling on them and also before he was champion his fights were always on the big cards we saw that with dustin charles we saw that with francis stipe and of course connor dustin three and this is enabling him to reach a bigger audience and he's always delivering on his fights there's a lot of stars that are big and their fights kind of suck we see that with floyd a lot his fights were terrible they were all boring but sean is always able to deliver but moving on to his charisma which is the biggest point of contention on sean and there has been so many videos talking about how his charisma is bad but a lot of people don't know is sean actually actually admits that he isn't the best on the mic at press conferences. Now, this is obviously a reach, but everyone knows that Sean and Weed go hand in hand. He's always smoking, and when he's going into a fight, he is sober. So, a lot of people think that that could be why his personality is a little dumbed down. It may be a crazy theory, but if he himself is admitting he's not great on the mic, I think that's an okay thing, and I think he knows it's something to work on. But I do think what you can know is that when it comes to social media and putting out YouTube videos and, and entertaining shorts, he delivers every time. There's, of course, the viral one of him kicking the bong, there's the viral one of him pretending to be Ryan Garcia and Oscar De La Hoya. And I think what's actually cool is that he isn't like some mega star that acts weird. He acts like a normal dude most of the time. I think that's something that people can relate to. And the more you watch his content, you kind of get it. Because if you only watch pay-per-views and you only see the interviews he's putting out the week of the fight, I can see why you might not like him. But if you look into his other stuff, he definitely has a relatable charisma. And he's a pretty normal dude that I don't think a lot of people would hate on. And this change over time is definitely something that would be needed for him to surpass conor mcgregor's stardom and it's the most pivotal point of any star i think you can measure influencer boxing a lot if people care about you and who you are they will watch your fights whether it's good or bad so him also having good fights definitely adds into that and in terms of content this is the big one that he's delivering on time and time again and i alluded to it earlier in charisma he knows how to create content and he's been pumping out content for years if you don't know he went through a period where he was banned for about a year and a half because he got popped for a substance that he claimed he didn't take which i honestly believe him and through that time, he was just focused on streaming as much as possible, and he was pumping out a lot of gaming content and a podcast. I think what's more important is that he learned how to make content. And then in 2020, podcasts blew up, and social media blew up, YouTube blew up even more. They were, of course, big before, but when everyone is trapped in their homes, it's obviously going to be even more massive. He befriended the Nelk Boys and Paul Civit, and he's always been on Joe Rogan throughout his entire career, and he reaches a much larger audience through that, because Nelk Boys are massive, Logan Paul is massive, and Joe Rogan is literally one of the most famous human beings on the entire planet and he's getting these spots time and time again which has made it that fans that are casually into UFC or maybe not even know what the UFC is they're familiar with Sean O'Malley they know his name and of course him being on contender series when Snoop Dogg was there on the call also helped get him that boost upon entering so he's just been riding that wave this whole time and it's become massive if you 
you see the vlogs he's put out, the documentaries he's put out for his fights, he understands the content game more than I think any other fighter. Because a lot of fighters pump out content that is really average, but he seems to understand how to get it going and how to create viral moments. And also, he's pretty active on Twitter, creating a lot of internet beef that people care about. So we understand where he's at with the three principles, but how does he actually get bigger than Connor? What is the meat and potatoes of how this happened? Because not everything in the three principles is weighed equally. For example, if your fights are that good, you will have that level of viewership. If your charisma is that good, like we saw with Floyd, you will have that level of viewership. And before we jump to the next massive point, if you've been enjoying this video so far, leave a like and comment and let's get back to it. So his fight path. First of all, he's going to have to beat Marab. Whether he's going to do that or not is definitely debatable because Marab is an absolute killer at the moment. He is one of the scariest fighters in the entire division. And if he styles on Marab, he's definitely going to win over hardcores. And if the UFC can build up Marab correctly, this is going to be a massive fight. If they show Marab ragdolling Peter Yan throughout all of their promotions, ragdolling Henry Cejudo throughout all of their promotion, this is going to be a massive fight. And if that card is built correctly and in the right spot, it will propel him even more. That will be his second title defense in his third title fight. And then let's just say he does get through Marab in spectacular fashion. This is going to be the big one that is going to propel him not to Connor level. This would propel him past, I believe, John Jones, Israel Adesanya, and Khabib if he wins this next fight. That would, of course, be against Umar Nurmagomedov. Now, Umar is going to have to win his fights as well and get to that spot, and it seems like he's going to have to fight Corey to get there. I think we can all see the storylines. Umar to Khabib, Sean to Connor. It's almost like a disciplined Connor against a more crazy Khabib because we saw Umar get dropped he's definitely not as good as khabib and sean is definitely looking sharper than connor in terms of being more grounded when it comes to actually becoming champion if he beats umar he is going to become such a megastar on an insane level that will be one of the highest pay-per-view sales ever that is a nomegamanov against sean o'malley and these russian wrestlers are looked at world beaters and from the casual perspective how many times have you heard the joke oh it's a russian fighter definitely bet on them it happens time and time again these russian fighters relate to the casual audience because they all assume Assume that they are Khabib. Whether that is right or wrong to stereotype, it is what it is. Casual fans that barely watch always assume that these guys are the best. That fight might be even better given the eyes if, if it's more of a war than a one-shot knockout or a really boring decision. So long as it's a war, I think he's going to become a massive star. So what does he do from there? I think it's pretty clear to everyone at that point, he would have to go up and fight Ilya Taporia. So let's jump to what Ilya would have to do to get to that spot. Ilya would also have to build up his star because as you know, when stars fight one another, you almost steal their star power. So if Ilya goes out, beats Volk again in Spain, and then beats Max Holloway, he would undoubtedly become a star on the level of Sean as well. Sean Ilya at that point, if all of those things happen, would have a chance of being bigger than Connor Khabib, which I know is crazy. Think that's Ilya Taporia beating Volkanovski and Max Holloway and Sean O'Malley that has already beat Marab and Umar. That is a stadium level fight that would draw in the eyes of the entire world. That is hitting every market possible. Ilya would own Europe at that point, especially if he beats Volk and Max. And after beating Ilya, just a massive, massive, massive fight. I believe if he goes into boxing and fights Ryan Garcia or Javante Davis, he would just become a star on a level we've never seen. And I believe at that point, he would have a chance at surpassing Connor. And of course, if he beats them, I think he would surpass Connor. That would be the biggest pay-per-view in the history of combat sports. A double champ Sean O'Malley who has defenses and then going into boxing and beating their biggest stars in Ryan Garcia or Javante Davis. If you just want a cherry on top of this perfect perfect unicorn situation he comes back and fights for the lightweight belt and i think by then he would easily clear it if he beats all of those people has two belts beats ron garcia and then comes and wins a third belt at that point i think everyone would look and say jesus christ he might be better than john jones so obviously this whole situation is a bit insane a bit crazy but i think it's fun to speculate i know a lot of people are gonna hate because everyone hates on sean o'malley and a lot of hardcore fans hate on the superstars for whatever reason so why don't you check out the full story of Sean O'Malley in 5 minutes if you've never heard it before. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, and don't forget, we're just gonna start it, we're gonna stay consistent, and I'll see you in the next video.